Hey everybody, thought I'd go out and do the uh, lower yard walk now. Show you some of the stuff that's going on in our yard. You can see the sunflowers are really taking off. We got some nice thick stalks. Getting some of their heads on there. The squash is coming out of the boxes. There's some of those dark orange marigolds. You saw in the other video that we put up this weekend, harvested off all the eggplants. The fruit that was growing on those. Got some more of the sunflowers here, some of our beans, our fall beans. Nothing really to see in the boxes right now. Well, you can see the beans, I guess. There's those beans from last week, the Monte Cristos. Here's our sweet potatoes. They look like they've really filled out. Can't wait to see how many sweet potatoes we actually get out of there. Let's see, the gala apples are almost ready to harvest. I think we might have to harvest those this week because they look like they're ready to go. There's some blemishes on some of these, but we'll just cut around those to make the applesauce. Sunflowers are doing good. Kiwis have really expanded this year. So excited to see how they uh, eventually start producing some of their fruit. Got some nice vines going. And as you remember, this one here is the female kiwi coming up. And we also have the grapes that we put on here this year. I wasn't expecting any to get any grapes since it's his first year growth, but uh, I'm pretty happy with how they've taken off. This is the male kiwi. See the grapes have a lot of, a lot of good growth coming this way. Good, good, good. And the blackberries. You can see we gotta harvest some blackberries today. Big, thick ones. Nice, uh, thornless type. So those are always welcome. That way you're not going to get snagged every time you go and try to grab a couple of blackberries. <laughs> Blueberries, I think, are pretty much done at this point. Because we've harvested off pretty much all of them. There's a few scragglers here and there. But uh, they're pretty much done for the season. Uh, you can hear the lawnmower starting up. It's 9 o'clock. <laughs> Here's our tomato trellis, our little tunnel. You can see it's a pretty cool idea. I mean, you know, it makes it nice and easy to harvest. You know, you can walk through there and just kind of reach up and pluck them out. The only thing I did notice is that these nice little small squares here it makes it a little hard to get your fingers up in there to harvest off the tomatoes. But I figure if I, you know, this winter I may come through and I might cut out every other one. That way I get a nice four by two opening I can stick my hand up through for next year. But I'm definitely going to be leaving this because I like the I like that look, and Paula likes it. So if anything that Paula likes in the garden, I like in the garden because it lets me do more experimentation. So <laughs> if she gives me a thumbs up, it's good to go. As you can see, we got you know there's there's tons of tomatoes here that we still need to get, and you saw yesterday in the video how much I harvested off, and we put in in every one of those. Uh, those tomatoes that we harvested off yesterday that uh, were put into the dehydrator. So all those tomatoes that we had sitting on the island, they were all put into the dehydrator and they're all going to be uh, stored away for winter. So that's kind of cool. I didn't know if all of those would actually fit and when we were doing the, uh, the cutting last night, when we put them into the dehydrator, they all seemed to get fit. So there's some tomato. Looks like it got eaten by something or stepped on. You can see there's some more squash down here we're going to have this week. Along with the video that I showed, you know, the squash that we got yesterday. You, know, you can see we're getting, you know, five to six, maybe up to eight squash per week that we're making into zoodles. So, this box turned out to be pretty, pretty good for squash. I don't know what we'll do with this box next year. You can see the uh, spaghetti squash are almost ready to harvest. Their leaves are dying off. 
So we'll be harvesting those off pretty quick, maybe in the next week or so. Figs looking good. Oh, there's some, there's some enemies of the garden. There you go, guys. There's one, one down, two down. Take care of those when you find them. There's the cucumbers. You can see the cucumbers, they haven't really taken off over here. So, I mean, that sun in the afternoon gets really hot here. They have, you know, got a few cucumbers we can harvest off. Probably get one, one uh, you know, jar of pickles off of just the cucumbers that come off the bees, but they're nothing that I expect. But I can't expect too much in that area because this is the first year we've ever planted anything there. And that soil is pretty bad. I mean, the only thing that's ever been on top of it is this. Uh, hog fuel wood mulch so it's and it's never had water over here either this is the first year that we've had a sprinkler system set up to where it actually will water up here and the drip lines I've put in so we'll get it we'll get it improved for for next year because next year I think I'm just gonna run beans there so when oh, you can see the, uh, the tomatoes are starting to turn these big ones here get a little color on there which is nice those are gonna be some nice uh, slicing beef steak Pink boar, we've got some there that look like they're ready to harvest. We've got a bunch of cherry tomatoes on here. I didn't harvest any of these off yesterday as part of our harvesting. I was leaving these, we're gonna pick some of these today and I'll take those to work for my lunch. And we've got the uh, trellis tomatoes here over the top. You can see there's still a bunch there that are gonna be turning this next week. That's the one thing about these uh, Montesino F1 tomatoes. They produce all the way up until you get your first, you know, heading into your first frost time, because they are they are really productive. I love these things. We grow these every year. We've had these for the last five years. Let's see. Here's the Punakiras. Looks like I gotta tuck this guy back up. But we've got quite a few uh, cucumbers to harvest off of this today. Some there, some more hanging there. This will be easier to walk around this side. And you can see there's a lot of, a lot of flowers. A lot of bees have been coming over here in the afternoons. There's quite a few that we've uh, taken off yesterday, but there's still some more. And then over here we've got our gherkins. You can see there's a bunch hanging back there. Need to be harvested off. Paula's going to do some uh, canning today with the carry canner. There's some more of our beans on the new trellis. I love using this bamboo that we grow in our yard. There's a nice little accent to the uh, whole growing homestead. But we've got a lot of our own uh, post material now for trellises growing right here on our backyard. Of course, you know, you have to use some kind of a T post. Otherwise, it's not going to be sturdy enough to where it'll hold up. And they rot pretty quickly if you sink them into the ground. So I want to save these. And I'll just use these metal T-posts, which, you know, they're not totally off the homestead, but they sure help. You can see the beans. Actually, I want to show you guys these beans. How they've taken over the hanging baskets. Kind of a neat looking little... You know, welcome to our garden sign, and now we've got the beans going up over the top. You know, Paul and I just like sitting and watching all this stuff. Seeing the cucumbers go through the apple tree. Beans. It's all its own little uh, symbiotic relationship with nature. Alright, that's kind of the yard walk down below here. I'll do the uh, upper yard walk next. Alright, talk to you guys again. Bye.